with host and founder of New Life Ministries, Stephen Arterburn. New Life Live is dedicated to transforming lives one at a time, thanks to the giving hearts of you, our listeners. Our goal is to provide you with wisdom from God's Word to give you hope and help in life's hardest places. If you have a question you'd like to ask today, our phone lines are open. Call 1-800-229-3000. That number again is 1-800-229-3000. Now here's Steve. Welcome to New Life Live. This is Larry Sonnenberg. I'm sitting in for Steve today. And I'm a blessed man because sitting next to me is Alice, Dr. Alice Benton. Hi, Hi, Alice. Hi, Larry. Hi, everybody. And uh, Becky Brown is here with us today from the Indiana studio. I'm I'm holding up the Midwest. (laughs) (laughs) So for our Midwest listeners, here I am. And looking fabulous with a a nice new haircut that I haven't seen. Oh, great. (laughs) You just never know what's going to be on the other end of that screen. (laughs) I have to tell you something. The other day I heard the funniest thing. You know, we have people listen to us in so many different ways you can listen on the podcast you listen on your local radio station sirius xm all the different things but we had one listener that said she listens at work and i said well how do you do that and she says well my hearing aids are bluetooth so i can listen <laughs> through my hearing aids <laughs> so hey there's another way to listen if you got yeah. hearing aids just turn I on that love bluetooth that. and listen to new life live <laughs> and we're going to be here two hours so call us at 800-229-3000 and uh, you'll get some good counsel from Becky and uh, Alice. But you know, tomorrow is Thanksgiving, and uh, there's a lot of things uh, to be thankful for and ways to be thankful and reasons. And there's nine of them. If we don't get through all nine right now, maybe we will off and on here this morning. Number one, God is deserving of our thanks. Give thanks to the Lord for he's good, his love endures forever. First Chronicles 16:34. So we got to remember, God is deserving of our thanks. Two, thankfulness is a great witness. Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known among the nations what he has done. You know, I just, I'm thinking about Thanksgiving, I'm just thankful we live in a nation that acknowledges thanks. Mm, right. You know, um, and I was, this is totally off the subject, but uh, you know Jeff, Jim Gaffigan, he's a Yes, a clean oh my gosh, comedian. he's so funny. <laughs> he says, they, they must have been sitting around saying, Okay, well, uh, how about we have a day where we just eat a lot? <laughs> and he says, well, we're Americans. We eat a lot already. <laughs> That's right. Then he That's says, right. yeah, but how about if we just eat a lot with a bunch of people around the table that annoy us? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> happy Thanksgiving. Folks. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving. That's right. <laughs> so that's the witness. Three, in the midst of your struggles and pain, God is with you. Mm-hmm. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him. And I'm helped. My heart leaps for joy, and I will give thanks to him in song. Psalm that's 20. one of those. That's one of those verses, Larry, that needs to be on a sticky note on your bathroom mirror yeah, or isn't in it? your on your dashboard. It's just a great reminder that the Lord is our strength and our shield. Four, give thanks because God is for you. He remains faithful even when you falter. Let them give thanks to the Lord for His unfailing love and His wonderful deeds for men. That's found four times in Psalm 107. Hmm. If it's worth re- repeating f- to be in Scripture, I think it's worth repeating for us to remember. Five, it's a command to be thankful. And he, Jesus, took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So, thankfulness... You know, what, it's it's an ad. It's it, in a way, it's a little embarrassing that we devote a day to it because every day yeah. is supposed to be surrounded and centered in thanks. But but we're so forgetful. We need <laughs> these markers and these reminders. And I think he commands it in part because it's good for our health. It's an antidote to anger and resentment and anxiety. It's hard to stay in those frames of mind when you're proactively, intentionally trying to be grateful. Yeah, that's so true. I would love for us to have some callers to tell us what they're thankful for. I love that. And it may be in the form of a relationship that was transformed by something that they did this year, uh, whether they went to a workshop or heard something on the radio program, something to be grateful for. Well, give us a call. We'd love to take your calls and uh, answer some questions, and we're going to talk about thankfulness along the way. We'll be right back. Most of my life I've been dealing with an opiate addiction. Why is opioid addiction quickly becoming one of our nation's biggest killers? 
Maybe it's because it isn't only those who are addicted who are in denial. We did what I see so many parents do, is it can't be an addiction. There's something medically wrong. It's impossible to solve a problem when you don't know what you're up against. And families will try to find any explanation except the one that will put them on the right path. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family disease. It doesn't affect just the individual. If someone you love is abusing painkillers, know what you're up against. It's time to admit it's addiction and seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have Christ-centered partner treatment centers around the country. Call 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. We just made a decision. We will do whatever it takes. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. Okay, we're back. Uh, before going to the phones and talk to William, I've got one other thing on thankfulness here that I want to get to. Thanksgiving shows that you know to whom you belong and who builds character. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. um it's it's these things are so simple but we like you said we forget about them mm -hmm. and god knew we were going to have a memory problem he, he knew that from the very beginning a lot of instructions in scripture about standing stones and uh piles of stones and things so that when you walk by them your your kids will ask what happened there mm -hmm. so well let's go talk to william william's on line one calling from lynchburg virginia he's on sirius xm Hello, William. Hey, William. Hey, good uh, morning to you. Or afternoon is it? Yeah, good afternoon. <laughs> How y'all doing? Great. Good. How can we help you? Awesome, awesome. Hey, uh, thanks for taking my call. And uh, I have a um, a relative there claiming gender dysphoria, and actually um, had her um, you know breast removed, and before anybody knew anything about it. And my sister Molly is uh, is uh, concerned about um, not uh, how do you say it? She thinks she's going to compromise her faith if she doesn't say something in regards to it. And I'd just like to know what would be the most constructive way of approaching someone like that. I deal with a lot of people out in the public, and, and I usually let the Lord lead them to me, and then I have a reason to talk to them, you know. But when you're going to a family gathering tomorrow of, of sorts, you know, and then that's just a, a forced situation, I believe. And uh, and she feels led to want to say something, and I just wanted to get some input on what to say or how to handle that. Are you talking? Are you talking about not to live in their sin? Yeah. William, are you talking about how to talk? William, are you talking about how to talk to your niece or how to talk to your sister about not talking to your niece? No, I don't. No, I think we should talk to her, but I know there's a right way of doing it together, you know. And I just want to the right way, right, to talk to my niece. So, I have an opinion on that, William. Um, I, I think Please. one of the <laughs> best things we can do is to love people well. Um, if the right. niece isn't asking you or her mother for an opinion on this, um, it's probably, first of all, Thanksgiving isn't the time to kind of settle all yeah. those things. Um, but you really can uh, just kind of come alongside her and love her in a way that she if she ever has a struggle where she wants to talk to you or your sister about it that she would feel um safe to do so um, yeah yeah right. there's so many exactly. people that are going to thanksgiving dinner tomorrow and they're going to try and figure out how they're going to tell their mm -hmm. loved one what they think and i just want to put it out there mm. just don't do that <laughs> just don't do that <laughs> right it's Amen. you know it, it you know whenever we have when we have somebody who um we're in relationship with that's when we get to have a voice into their life and it's when they're asking and i think um so many times we really want to help people live their life and they're not asking and, and right. Truth right i agree with that and you don't think it's a compromise of your Christian values if you're in the midst and you you know you don't say something. That's what she was concerned about as well too. And I'm like, I don't know, Molly. I, said, I went back about 20 years ago. I remember some effort called Love One Out, and and how they won so many souls over from the you know that 
Uh, yeah, we don't there. do that. And, uh, <laughs> we, we don't do that. Alice, you had I, something you wanted to say. Well, I think truth, if, if God wants you to give truth to your niece or for her mother to do so, a couple factors come into play. If her mother has already been living life as a believer and her values around this are obvious, then, then hammering the truth home, it just tends to distance these relationships and it endangers any influence that your sister may have over her daughter in the future. Difficult truth can really right. only be accepted and heard if it's um, built on top of a foundation of a lot of grace and a lot of love and acceptance. And acceptance doesn't Amen. mean approval of, li of the lifestyle, but it means creating safety and the love and the relationship so that if God wants truth, that can come later after the grace and the love. I think, All right. Got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. William, uh, just I appreciate you sharing that. I really do. Thank yeah. you so much. Just Hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving and and you share the love with people who need it. Bingo. Yes. And Becky, yes, thank you so much. <laughs> Becky, you said something about bringing these issues up at Thanksgiving, and sometimes we force truth in front of other people within a crowd, and that just makes it almost impossible for the listener to receive the truth. So and these True conversations story. should only be in private within that yeah, safe and, environment. And to clarify, yeah, and to clarify, it is a not, don't bring them up yes, at Thanksgiving. Yes. <laughs> it's like, um, I actually just kind of worked on something in my own family and I said, listen, the thing we gotta do is love this person. Like the, the, this is not the time to grind that ax or you know sharpen it for that matter, but just love people well. It's hard enough to do that, right? Absolutely. William, thank you for your call. Let's talk to Kim. Kim has a thankfulness she wants to share with us. Hello, Kim, Boston, Massachusetts. She listens on Sirius Hello. XM, too. Hi. How are you? Hi. Th very good. Thank you. Thank you for taking my call. Uh, I just want to give all praise and glory to God today and thanks um, and give encouragement to some moms and dads who may not have their children this year with mm. them uh, due to opioid addiction. Uh, I struggled with my son for the last 13 years, and uh, praise God, uh, my son is going on one year sober. Amen. Uh, oh, from outstanding. Heroin. Yes. And so, you know, just to you moms and dads, don't stop praying for your kids, and uh, and just believe that God always keeps His promises. Boy, there's a good statement. You know, we get yeah, we get, always always keeps His promises. We are an impatient people. You know, we we stand sure stand at the microwave and wait for 20 seconds and think it's never going to happen. But well, a lot of good things come with patience. <laughs> yeah, well, way to go. Well, thanks for yeah. sharing that. Yeah. Um, well, and I so think too, Kim. I'm, I'm sure that you. I'm sure that you did a lot more than just praying and yes. waiting too, right? You you had your own work oh, that you were doing. Oh, it was a painful journey. It was definitely a painful, painful journey, and. Um, um, you know, every parent that has to go through this, there is, uh, there are no words. Uh, a right. parent definitely goes through the addiction with their child, for sure. Right. Yes. Right. And it's so important for them to do, you know, whether it's uh, codependent or Al-Anon or, you know, to do your own work so that as your uh, child or your adult child is going through some sort of addiction that you are um, able to have support for yourself. Because like you said, it is so difficult. We're, we're celebrating Absolutely. with you, Kim. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Happy, thanks, happy, happy Thanksgiving, Happy everyone. Thanksgiving. That's thank, right. Thank you for giving us a call. Um, I want to read one more of these before we take another call. There's a few up on the board there, but let me find it. Where did it go? Here it is. Okay, the next one was, Give thanks because God uses broken vessels like us to do his work. Amen. Boy, isn't that the truth? Um, uh, this whole ministry is all about broken vessels being being uh, put back together again mm -hmm. and uh, made more beautiful because of it and sharing what they went through and helping others yeah. that have gone through it. Yeah, because the reality is we are all in need of a Savior. And I think so many times we um, forget the fact that uh, none of us are perfect and perfection isn't going to be attainable here on this planet. But uh, the Lord gives us strength and gives us a new life um, in so many different ways. 
and th- there's great hope for us in our weaknesses here too. Mm-hmm. A lot of us beat ourselves yeah. up for the areas that we fall short in, and yet that's exactly where God loves to come in and use the mistakes and use our shortcomings to glorify Him. Paul gives me so much hope with that of let your power shine through my weakness mm-hmm. be made perfect. Just because you know, we see in every man's battle workshop, a lot of men come in there and they think, that somehow or other they got out of the shadow of God's love. And they don't realize God is with them through every step, and he's still there with them today. And no matter mm-hmm. what you do, he's still loving on you. Mm-hmm. Let's talk to May. May is in Pasadena, California, right here listening on KKLA. Hello, May. Yes. How can we help you? Hello, hi. Hello. Yes, um, hello, hi, everybody. I listen to your radio all the time. I'm so glad that you can take my phone call. Um, I'm in a very painful situation right now. Um, my husband that I married for 15 years, we have two children together. Um, one is 14, one is 13 years old. Um, just a few months ago, he told me he wanted a divorce. Mm. Um, Sorry. So the, yes, so the last few months I've been working with him to see if there's any uh, hope to for reconciliation. Um, but so far, he's been very determined. He, he say he, um, we are so different. Um, we are not right for each other. Um, and he also say that he is very lost in life. He's 48. Um, he wants to go out be by himself, he want to find himself. Mm. Um, I don't think there is a, a woman right now. Um, I don't think that's the issue. Um, but I don't know for sure. So but what what would your I'm question just, be for, for us? My question is, I want to know what to do. I want to know what to do right now. I want to save my marriage. I'm a Christian. He was a Christian before, but he's not going to church anymore, and he say he don't believe in God anymore. So Did I something don't know happen, what to May? Do right now. Did uh, something happen? No, 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 no. He's just not. He's just not a very happy person at the be- uh, even in the beginning. Um, he he have a rough childhood. He's Mom and dad um, doesn't get along, um, but they stick through their marriage. Um, so mm-hmm. he suffer a lot of uh, resentment. Um, he, I don't think he's very secure. Um, and his mom always in front of him complain about their marriage. So he have a lot of those hurt inside. And have, you done, have you done? Have you done any counseling, mm-hmm. May? Have you guys done any counseling? Yes, we did. Um, a few years back, um, maybe about five, six years back, we did went to a Christian counseling uh, service, um, maybe for about five, six sessions. And then once we talk about his past, he get agitated or, he, or he, he's not. What, at the end, he kind of walked out on one of the sessions and he never want to come back. Well, and, it's because a lot um, of times count- when... When you get to a place in your life where um, the past is just right in front of you, like what you're describing him, it's really painful to go into the process of healing. doesn't mean that you don't want to do that, um, but he definitely needs that help. I'm not sure, um, it, you know, we can't always make somebody do something, but he, uh, he you know, he needs help. Um, I, uh, my suggestion would be that if he's not willing to go, that you go anyway, May, that you continue to do some work and um, just in this whole process of healing. Um, Mylon and Kay always say that uh, healing occurs in relationship. And I think uh, it would be pretty powerful for you to be able to speak into some of that wounding that he has if he's willing. But, you know, that's that's a really that's a really painful place to be in. Alice, do you have anything? Well, May, how how devastating that your children are are so young, teenager and adolescent, and I heard your tears as you talked about your husband making this decision. Um, So so we're hurting alongside of you for what's going on. And and if I think if you put too much focus and energy in trying to change his mind, 
think mm-hmm. you'll be spinning your wheels. So I want to support what Becky said and add to it that when we apply the taking the beam out of our own eye principle, we just can't lose. And so going into therapy, especially to do a, a deep self-evaluation to see if there's anything within you about your behavior that may have added to some of the problems in the marriage. If your husband sees you doing that and sees the change within you, that can be very powerful. It may or may not change his mind, but you and your children will benefit from it no matter what. And it gives a better chance for your marriage. May, um, but you want to move on with the divorce right now, so what should I do? Still do what we're telling you to do and act quickly. Stay on the line for us to get you connected to a counselor. May, thank you for calling. Um, what, what, what book Let's could send we send her? How her? We love. Okay, Let's How We how love. love. I want you to read that. I also want you to consider a last-ditch effort. Get him to go with you to our Intimacy and Marriage Workshop in February. Good idea. I feel blessed to have had this opportunity for my needs to be met, connecting with other women who are fighting the same fight, hoping for healthy marriages, and growing closer to the Lord on their journey. My name is Shelly Martinkus, and I want to personally invite you to the Restore Workshop. If you have been affected by betrayal, it might be that your husband has been looking at pornography, it might be an emotional, a physical affair. I would love for you to come join us. I feel encouraged and hopeful that even in my struggle, I am enough. You will leave with hope, with a community of sisters ready to support you, and you will also leave with tools to move you forward on this journey. Through the sharing in our small group, I realize that I am not alone. Please don't hesitate. Pick up the phone, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. I would love to see you there. The Restore Workshop is coming to Southern California February 28th to March the 1st. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE to find out more. That's 1-800-639-5433 or online at newlife.com. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. Your ministry has saved my life. If you struggle with emotional hurt, family or marriage problems, the pit of depression, or the pain of addictions, we can help. I'm down 100 pounds now from what I was. You guys are awesome. You're a blessing to America. (laughs) Our treatment programs provide clinically appropriate solutions from licensed professionals, all in a biblical framework. I have had problems with alcohol. I think God has ordained this place to be His. You don't have to be a prisoner of your pain. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. She tells me that I'm a new man and I feel like a new man. It worked for me and it can work for them too. This time it is different. If you're ready to take the first step toward genuine spiritual and emotional healing, please call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll-free 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. Okay, welcome back. Um, I want to remind everybody, because we're going to Thanksgiving, and the day after is the Black Friday that started about three weeks ago everywhere. (laughs) (laughs) It's not quite the same as it used to be. But I want you to think, a lot of people shop, and a lot of people shop on Amazon.com. Mm-hmm. And at New Life, uh, we, we are a registered charity there. And so if you go to smile.amazon.com and select New Life Ministries as your charity of choice, everything you buy when you log in to smile.amazon.com and order something, a very small percentage of your purchase uh, will be cr- credited to an account, and they send us a check every two mm-hmm. or three months. And I think our last check was... Probably about eight hundred dollars. Wow, that's awesome! So if if and and everything you do on Smile dot Amazon dot com, it's as as far as I can tell, it is the same thing as Amazon dot com. Yeah. yeah, there's I mean, nothing. There's not different. different products or anything. So. I do it, and they even send you a reminder if you're on Amazon dot com. They'll say, "Hey, Becky, don't you want to be on Smile dot? Oh, yeah. yes, I do want to be yeah. on Smile dot Amazon dot com." And Becky, I think your purchases and mine account for about <laughs> six hundred to eight hundred dollars. Probably, you're probably correct. <laughs> I agree with that. Okay, um, well, let's go talk to Byron. Byron's online for listens on Weva, Fort Meade, Maryland. We uh, love Weva. Yes, we do. Byron, you have a thankful message for us. Hey, good morning, or I'm not sure where you guys are. Afternoon, morning, but I just say, say greetings to you. <laughs> you too. I want to say 
thank you for, of course, taking my call. And that's what I'm the most thankful for, period. I, I love... Uh, of course, WAVA, I love your show. I just feel like I'm being ministered to as you guys are talking through, mm. you know, issues that uh, people are displaying. And I promise you, trust me, I've got a lot of things kind of going on, but I learned a long time ago, you know, it, even before I certainly am growing in my faith continuously, but I've always been so grateful just for, you know, everything, not even mm-hmm. the issues, because I, I look at it like this. when Whenever there are issues, I, 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 I've always been uh my grandma used to always tell me the, the will of god will never take me where the grace of god can't protect me go. i internalized yeah, that so that's right. why that, that gave away you know the fear but then i've had chaplains in my military journeys who was like you know we as christians should be you know just thanking god for you know for everything and don't ask you know to to uh you know light my load to strengthen my back mm-hmm. and i used to think about that too so i always feel like you know when god or, or, or allows a challenge you know for me that's an opportunity for me to grow uh, the, the lesson may not be for me. It may be for somebody else. And if he thought enough of me to place me in the situation, I will embrace it wholeheartedly, learn every lesson that I possibly can, be grateful for that, because I know he's preparing me for better things. And I, you Woo-hoo! guys uh, certainly contribute and reinforce that with your you know, your programs and, and the way you guys um, th- um, you know, get through the issue. So I'm thanking God for you guys, and I hope you continue this lead, you know, minister to individuals and, you know, of course, myself. And I want to, you know, pray for you guys uh, continuously also that you will continue that in, in the spirit of God. Well, thank you, William. We're, thank we're you. grateful for your phone call. And if your pastor gets sick suddenly this weekend, you get up there and preach. Uh, that's you right. Can do that's it. right. By- <laughs> yeah, Byron, you, you are a very uplifting man to be yes. with. And we can even mm-hmm. just feel that in this call. So you're giving us a gift by what you're saying and you're ministering to our listeners. And thank you for serving that's our right. country, Byron. Thank you. Yeah. That's right. Right. Well, Let's hey, send well, him a copy of People Fuel. I appreciate Fuel. that so much, and it's funny. It's funny he would say that because my pastor did. They were asking. <laughs> they me, they me. I, I've had You're my prophetic. time. I said, "Dude, you the general. I'm continuously. I'm glad to serve. <laughs> <laughs> You're the general." <laughs> okay. Well, but thanks, appreciate Byron. You appreciate Thank your you call. God bless right, you. Happy, too. happy Thanksgiving to you. I want to send him a copy of People Fuel because he just fueled us. All so right. He's a we'll perfect example of those encouragers. I agree with you, Alice, on that. That's so awesome. And we do. I'm so grateful for all of the listeners that are out there. I had a call yesterday from uh, a listener that said she's so grateful. She's part of our Club New Life family. And she said, you know, I'm so grateful because um, I have never called to the show to get, you know, a question answered. But in hearing one of the hosts give uh, some direction to another caller, it changed everything in my life for the better. Mm. And she cannot say thank you enough. So, you know, we just, we're grateful for all of our listeners and, of course, our Club New Life family. Well, speaking of Club New Life, it's a good segue, Becky, because uh, you mentioned people fuel. And mm-hmm. part of the Club New Life benefit of being a Club New Life member is we have this uh, video library that only Club New Life members get access to. John Townsend, we've recently put up there a couple of uh, segments that he did, and a lot of what he did was from his book, People Fuel. And he also stayed uh, yesterday after radio, and he did some more segments, and I don't remember what they were about. I don't believe it was People Fuel. There were other subjects that we asked him to do it. But that video library is just a very, very uh, powerful tool and a powerful thing for people to go and listen to. So if you haven't joined Club New Life, consider that one reason you might. Another reason you might is that when you give, and it's a monthly gift to New Life, it makes such a big difference in Mm -hmm. how we're able to help more and more people more regularly. Mm -hmm. And and the lives that change come because people join Club New Life. Uh, And the thank you gift. Thank you gift are four uh, devotions. And you got to help me, Becky, remember all four. Yeah, uh, there's character, prayer, peace, and healing. A hundred days of each of those, which is more than a year long. You could do more than a devotion a day. And, uh, you know, it's a thank you note from us for being part of Club New Life. But you're going to be um, so grateful to hear of all the lives that you are impacting because of your faithful gifts. And we just, we love our Club New Lifers. Yes, we sure do. And I want to remind you, we're here an hour after this hour. So you can continue calling 800-229-3000. And uh, Becky and Alice will give a lot of godly wisdom to you to help you with your struggles and where where you're going. That I, thought you're, you're, I thought you were going to say, we'll fix you right up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it was only you right here else? today, I might. <laughs> 
but hold the line. We'll be right back, and we've got some calls to take. My wife had found me out through my past and my sexual addiction since I was a small child. It really gave me the opportunity to start digging into my past, start digging into my childhood, figure out what was causing me to feel the way I was feeling. Every Man's Battle will really give you that opportunity because all the guys there in that room are there for the exact same reason you're there. I don't want to be the reason that my kids are going to counseling. I don't want to be the reason that they begin to struggle with the same issues that I'm struggling with and I've got to put an end to this. Yes, you can be different. God does love you. You can be forgiven for this and there's a way out of this. But you have to acknowledge that you have to change and that there's a problem. If you're struggling, call us. There are people on the other end of the line who want to hear from you, who want to help you. And we don't want you to hand down something to another generation that just looks like pain and destruction. You can hand down redemption. But you got to take that first step. Just give us a call. It's 1 800 639 5433. It's 1 800 New Life. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. I'm an addict, and I'm trying to get God in my life again. You seem to be able to get to the crux of the problem quickly. Our Christ centered treatment programs can help you break free to embrace all that God has for you and your family. I just want to thank you guys for bringing me to a relationship with Jesus. There really is help for marital problems, depression, addictions, panic attacks, and feelings of hopelessness. I came back with so many tools to help me prepare myself to fight this struggle and this battle that I have every day. You can start living again today. Living the life God intended for you. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. They did care and they did follow up very lovingly and it made all the difference in my life. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Someone who cares is waiting at the other end of the phone. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Just call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-639-5433. glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. Okay, we're back. And uh, this is Larry Sonnenberg sitting in for Steve today and with Alice Benton and Becky Brown. I was going through earlier uh, a lot of reasons to be thankful, and there's two left. I want to go through one now. Give thanks because you have a Savior. Amen. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift, 2 Corinthians 9.15. So we just want to help you have a thankful spirit as you gather tomorrow with your family that you might not be as thankful for as you ought to be. So let's go and talk to Sherry from Atlanta, Georgia. And this is on Sirius XM. Hello, Sherry. Hi, how are you? We're doing really well. How can how we help you, you today? Hi. First of all, I'm really grateful for you all, and mm-hmm. I've been listening to New Life, and so I just wanted to just share my gratitude Thank for you. all the wisdom that God has given you and for sharing your gift with us. But here's Thank the you. reason I'm calling. Um, I have um, I have a friendship with several people. Um, one in particular, um, a 42 year relationship with someone. Wow. Um, we all were living our life <laughs> several years ago before Christ and so because of the life that I was living that was outside of God's will I actually relocated from my hometown and moved to where I am now and in my move I actually brought a few people with me one of the one of the persons that I brought with me or followed me but we all can change um was a friend that I again have been friends with for well over 40 years and that was 27 years ago uh, fast forward 27 years later or 26 years later, this person moved back again um, with me and lived with me because she lost everything. But and sometimes when you're in pro- close proximity with someone, you really get to see them for who they mm-hmm. are. And um, while she was living with me for almost a year, I came to realize that she had started to have disdain for me. And I don't know if it was because... She had lost everything, and I was still here, and, I, and God has blessed me tremendously even in the midst of a divorce. So but she's still living with is, you? Yeah, you go know, ahead. She actually moved, but she, when she moved, she didn't give me an address. It was a very hard uh, year of her living with me, and I just and I come to realize that I just didn't think she was my friend. And so now so I'm kind of grieving the law. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. So what's your question, Sherry? How would you? I don't really question? know if I should move on, 
or try to restore the relationship. But in the 20 something years we've been friends, I've always been the one um, backtracking to restore relationship. I don't feel that she's been here for me. In fact, I feel it's a really lopsided relationship where I do a lot of giving and she does nothing even to apologize or even admit wrong. And as so, much as I love her, I really think it's time to move on. And I just need some, some counsel on that. <laughs> well, you just answered your own question. <laughs> it's time I mean, to I move don't on. think, okay. yeah, I don't think any of us disagree with that. Right, Ellis? I mean, um, you know, you mentioned needing to grieve. And I think um, that's probably your next step because it's it's so hard when people move out of your life without any closure and it doesn't matter if that's through an actual physical death or just the death of the relationship because we want to work it out to the point where we understand it it's not like you want to get reconnected with her necessarily but it's like you want to have some idea of what what just happened here but um you know people tell you who they are <laughs> it's all the time believe them the first time and just kind of go okay well, this is what this was about I'm sad that we didn't have some other uh, ending, but this is just what it is. Alice, what do you what do you think about that? Some exceptions come to mind. So, Sherry, I want you to think about whether or not these apply to this relationship. If you have things you have not yet resolved with her on your end, if your street's not clean in the relationship, whether you need to ask for forgiveness for something or you need to, to share a truth with her, that could be one reason to have a communication with her again to kind of to clean your side of the street in the relationship. Another one is to ask God whether or not he needs you to minister to this woman. It's kind of sounding like the answer is no, that you've been trying that all along and you're getting hurt and perhaps taken advantage of with your generosity towards her. So it brings me to the last one is we each have to decide with God's guidance how much we limit our exposure to other people's unhealthy behavior um, because it can be such a drain on us that if we start to resent that person or avoid them, they're pretty good signs that we need to take different action to have a healthier distance. We don't always have to cut these folks off entirely but we may need to back away more or for a longer period of time taking a break from the relationship so consider all those options that is so good Alice. you're have. so smart <laughs> <laughs> i mean well because here's the thing I have. here's the thing Go sherry ahead, is you gotta re you, the the thing is that you may not get the answer that you want from her and so doing what alice said is really going to uh, provide some freedom and healing for you um, at the same time have some closure for this relationship. Yeah, and even if she makes that another communication to clear something up or to say something she needs to say, that doesn't necessarily mean that she's trying to restore the relationship and, uh, and r refresh the friendship to a point of you know, being fr close friends again. Right. It's There's never, ever any accountability, and she's one of four friends, a group of us, and she's always the, the focus. Okay. And I think it, and it's kind of difficult because I have a, a mutual relationship with her, with other people, and it kind of affects us as a group. But I feel like now what you're saying is, is right. That's what I've been feeling that I need to move on. And I have my own codependency and boundary issues. So for my growth and for my healing, I think it's best to move on. Okay. And, I, and I'm feeling that that's what God is saying. As much as I would like to restore it, she's kind of, a, she's kind of disqualified herself from being my friend well thank so sherry thank forward. you for yeah. calling i think you've got the answer and i think it'll be a oh. a good thing for you we hope you have a good thanksgiving becky you're the book lady what book should we send her? i would send her people fuel too because it, it explains you know john explains all those different types of people that we need in our life but also um describes the ones that we might need to edit and that's the graceful way of saying yeah you know, walk okay. away okay that's coming to you sherry thanks for your call Let's talk to uh, David. David's in Sirius XM. He's got a thankful greeting for us. David, uh, you there? Hi. I am here. Thank you for having me. So uh, what I'm thankful for is God provided a way for me to minister about him in my little business. Great. I own a fossil and, min I own a fossil and mineral business, and... Uh, my little slogan is God made me and you science sharks and dinosaurs too. <laughs> so, <laughs> I love it. So, and so, 
And then I hand out shark teeth to kids, so they call me Shark Teeth Dave. <laughs> <laughs> so, so many people want to fight about science. If you believe in science, you can't believe in God, or the earth is old, or the earth is young. And, and none of those things will get you in or keep you out of heaven. But the one thing that's true is God made everything. Yep. So that's what I get to tell people. Well, that's... And they say, oh, well, that's not real. Here's a fossil. God made this dinosaur. Isn't that cool? Are you and looking so, at me when you say well, that? <laughs> He's talking right. to you. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like whenever I think I have a problem that's too big, I'll look at one of my megalodon shark teeth or a spinosaurus tooth, and I'm like, wow, God made dinosaurs. Is my little problem really mm -hmm. too big for the guy that made right. dinosaurs? Mm. Right. You know, Good oh. job, Dave. Dave, thank you for calling. There, um, look up. There's an organization. It's its abbreviation is ASA. I think it's American Science Affiliation. A friend of ours at New Life um, was a director of that director of that for years, and it's a group that puts scientists and Christians together to to talk through where the intersection is and can be better proclaimed to see Christ. And uh, you might just look that up. That might be something of interest to you. Um, before we go to our next call, I just want to give a shout out. We have a friend here doing some uh, volunteer work, and her name is Dawn, and she's in. She's putting stamps on envelopes for us and getting Christmas cards together. Just want to say thank you, Dawn. Thanks, she's, Dawn. So, uh, let's see if we can get a question in before the break. Here, there was a call I wanted to go to. It's uh, no, that's not it. Okay. I'm sorry I'm taking so long. This is so good. Line eight. We're going to talk to Burbank, California. You're talking to Kate, KKLA. Kate, we've got about a minute before break. Could you give us a question in that amount of time, and then we'll come back and give you some answers. Sure. Um, my question was about triggers. I feel like I'm being triggered pretty bad lately from a email at the church that I attend. I just wanted some advice on how to better deal with it because I'm, I'm not sure what how to handle it okay oh, is what a little, little bit more information what is what is triggering about it is there something to do with a history usually that's what yes. the trigger involves um, my husband has been in recovery for I'd say three years now oh, okay he went to every man's battle all right and and then uh, we went to the intimacy and marriage workshop. Oh, okay. good. I don't really feel this time it's him. I feel it's more me. Okay. Because, like, in the past, I would see him looking at girls, oh. and it's not that. This time, it's I, more me. Just kind of I have a feeling Becky and Alice will help you. My wife asked me for the first time in 2011 if I would consider myself a sex addict, so I signed up. You know, I'd read the Every Man's Battle book, and it was a great book, but the workshop, it was the experience that really was key for me. If, if they go to EMB, they're going to be in good hands. You know, this is a safe place. They're going to be surrounded by men that simply walk the talk. The weekend leaders that they will go through this workshop with, they'll help them to get to the root of their issues. You know, I've been through a number of well-preached sermons, listened to and read countless books, uh, been to a number of seminars. But EMB for me was, it was a game changer. It truly saved my life. Being in this community, being in this workshop, being around these men will change them if they'll let them. You're going to encounter men that will meet you where you're at, and you will instantly walk into a safe place where they're welcome. If you're struggling, call us. We don't want you to go on struggling. Just give us a call. It's 1-800-639-5433. It's 1-800-NEW-LIFE. I was really living a very anxiety-filled life. I turned on New Life, and the topic that day was about anxiety. And just by listening, I got relief. You can help New Life Live stay in the air by joining Club New Life today. When you sign up to support us monthly through Club New Life, we'll send you a set of four devotionals, 100 Days of Character, Peace, Prayer, and the newly released 100 Days of Healing. Plus, there are ongoing benefits, like access to the Club New Life video library, the monthly Club New Life CD or download, quarterly resources, free shipping on purchase resources and discounts on workshops. I did go to Take Your Life Back. That's been immensely helpful to me. That's why 
I continue to support the ministry with the hope that not only am I helping my own situation, that I'm helping others as well. Support Club New Life, and together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. Okay, we're back and talking to Kate. Before we go right back to her, I just want to remind you that we'll be on another hour after this. Keep calling at 800-229-3000. And if you're holding, please hold through the break into the next hour and we'll get you at the beginning of the hour. Okay, um, Kate's being triggered at church. What? Who wants to go first? Kate, you're doing the exactly the right thing by calling and talking about this with safe people. So we're proud of you, first of all. And we want you to know you're not alone in this. This is so common for women in general, but especially those that have been traumatized by their husband's infidelity. And, and what we want for you is to continue often bringing this pain to other safe women because it's in the telling and the retelling over and over again of what you're struggling with and having that be heard by a loving, accepting audience that helps us to heal this wound. I, I, you may also have a need underneath the trigger um, which could be you may need a lot of reassurance from your husband. You may need to be able to tell him right then and there, oh, I'm feeling triggered right here in the sermon. Would, would you reassure me? Would you hold my hand? After church, can you tell me that you love me? Uh, can you tell me um, uh, that, that you're faithful to me? I need these reassurances. Those are good things to ask for, but it can be very hard for us to have the courage or believe that we have the right to express those needs to our spouse. So we talk about this at Restore. We just did a Restore workshop a couple of weeks ago, Kate. And, um, Kate, you have you been that to you that? I have. You I went to it in um, this last year, actually. Okay, go ahead, Awesome. Becky. So do you remember when um, Shelly talks about how to deal with triggers? about um you know where you it's something that needs to be healed it's a sign it's kind of like a sign that oh i've still got some work to do and it's not because you are imperfect all of us are imperfect but that's a deep wound and it just comes to the surface so um in a weird way you can almost you know be grateful on some level that oh okay i've just got i'm, I'm alive and i've got more work to do um, what have you tried to do to deal with the trigger? Because if this is at a certain place, um, what what have you tried? I've talked to my husband about it, and he has been um, reassuring me about that he, he's faithful to me and he loves me. I haven't done it, like, at the moment when I'm feeling that way. Usually I'll wait till we go home or we're alone. So I think I'm thinking about that, like, having yeah. that right then. But I've also talked to, I made a mistake because I talked to my mom about it and she knows like our history. So I thought like at least someone would understand where I'm coming from, but I felt mm. like really ashamed and like really mm. sort of degraded oh, about it. Sorry. Like, like I'm just an insecure, um, like I'm jealous of her, of this oh. female. And I'm it really so hurts, sorry. but I have a friend from Restore that lives far from me, but we keep in contact over the phone and I reached out to her after, and I wish I would have done it first, but she really encouraged me to pray for this girl and to talk to my husband about it. And I guess the, the difference with this time of having a trigger is that, like, this female is involved in, like, the marriage group that we go to at church. Mm. She's in a lot of different aspects of where my, like, me and my husband are putting ourselves in these different groups to grow. And so, right. it's like, I'm constantly around her. And she dresses like really provocative and is like really showy with trying to get attention from men and i feel like i'm the only one in the room that's bothered by it and it just and you know and you know what kate if, and you know what kate if you are the only one in the room that's okay like it it doesn't matter if not everybody else right. feels the same way you do this is this is for your own healing what i would encourage you to do is to definitely stay in touch with your friend from a store i would even encourage you if you haven't participated with sustained healing maybe you get into a phone coaching group for a while um, you know because part of the healing process is this ongoing uncovering of those things that kind of lay dormant and i'm so sorry that you were feeling shamed by your mom 
and didn't feel supported. That's all just salt in the wound. And But, Kate, I know that um, something good will come from this. It's just going to take a little bit of, uh, you know, just a risk with some safe people, like Alice said. And, um, you know, to have that community around you is invaluable. Um, I don't know if, you know, if that's something that you're interested in or if you have been doing counseling, but you definitely have to have some sort of a process in place on top of going to the workshops. It's not just you know, one thing and then you're done because these kind of things are part of the healing process. So um, I would encourage you to, if you want to get involved with a sustained healing group, you can give us a call or we can, you know, set you up after this call. But um, Larry, if I'd like to have her um, get a copy of Rescued Perfect. from Shelly, just that work. Okay. It, it might actually be appropriate too for Kate to bring this to that other woman in private making a request or confessing her struggle with this that woman may need to hear from another good christian woman about the reaction yeah i think that could be a future potential i just think as um tender as she is right now it could also be very painful like um because you never know what other people are dealing with mm -hmm. and so if she takes this really sensitive area to somebody who's not safe um, already, that could be a disaster. But I agree with you, Alice, in the future, I think that it it would be helpful. And you know what, it's just a mindfulness for all of us, um, you know, whether you're in the building or not, just to be aware that people are hurting. Not that you have to be everything to everyone, but, um, you know, just be aware. Kate, thank you for making the call to us. And we will pray that that uh, you find the comfort, the, the support and then what you need to have those triggers reduced. And and not there anymore. And thanks for the work that you and your husband have done together. I want to talk to Dorothy. Dorothy is in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. This is on WRGN. Hello, Dorothy. How can we help Hello. you? Hello. How are you guys doing today? Great. <laughs> Good, well, Dorothy. How are you? Thankfulness to express. Tell us I'm about it. I'm doing wonderful. I just want to call in and let you know what I am thankful for. I am so thankful that the Lord allowed me to go through my chemo. All right. And I know, because in going through my chemo, he showed me that he, because I couldn't work, so he showed me that he can provide all my mm -hmm. needs for me. And mm. more than that, one night I was watching TV, laying on the couch, and I had this feeling of peace from my head to my oh, toes. There you go. And that said to me that I got you and I'll never let you go. I love and it. And I'm thinking mm. that was so it felt so good that when we get to heaven, everything that we feel on earth, the good stuff, is just going to be multiplied all that much more. So it just makes me look towards going to heaven so much more. <laughs> and my relationship has just grown with the Lord, because since I wasn't working, I got more time to get into my Bible and understand this Word. And it was just a great experience. You know, Dorothy, you, you are the perfect last call of this program because you I'm have. Really good. I mean, you're you're <laughs> joyful. You have a lot of gratitude. Good reason well, for it. And it's a reminder of that verse I said you need to put on your dashboard, Psalm twenty-eight seven, that says, "The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in Him, and I am helped. My heart leaps for joy, and I will give thanks to Him in song." And Dorothy, doesn't that sound just like what you said? Mm -hmm. That is exactly <laughs> what she said, and it's a good way for us to come on the end of the program. And I want to add to it that the ninth reason about giving thanks. Give thanks because not only has your debt been paid, you can now live with hope, love, mm. and faith. Mm. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ, 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty seven. So the th I'm so grateful for, uh, for Alice and Becky for the wisdom that they have and share with you and the other radio hosts. I'm thankful for you listeners. I'm thankful that you support New Life. We need your financial support. Um, it's hard to come to the mic and always be seeking money from you, but it's not money we're seeking. We're seeking the possibility for more people uh, to experience the life change that God wants for them. And it does take money to do it, but that's the motive. Thank you for listening. Happy Thanksgiving to you. We'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for listening. We hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life. We want you to know that we're here for you, but you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener-supported ministry. 
to make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or write to us at New Life Ministries, P.O. Box 1029, Lake Forest, California, 92609. Please join us again tomorrow for New Life Live.